In this video, traders, we're going to look at six crazy questions asked at trader interviews, investment banks, prop firms, etc. If you're a graduate, stay tuned. Hey traders, very warm welcome to you. So you're going to a job interview at an investment bank, a prop firm, at any of these kind of things, they're gonna have the normal questions, right? Uh, where do you wanna be in five years time? Why do you want the job? Why do you love the company? You can prepare for those. You can go in there looking like the slickest dude or girl ever, because you can be prepared, you can have it ready, it can roll off the tongue, you'll be standing in front of the mirror, all the kind of stuff that you do to prepare for those questions. However, they will most likely throw you a curveball that will make you think on the fly. You can't really prepare for it. However, you can prepare how your mind works. And that is what they're looking for. They're not necessarily looking for the right answer. They're looking for how you get to that answer, your problem solving ability, how you go from one step to the next to the next. So with that being said, let's look at seven of the most common ones we see from job interviews for graduates at investment banks. Okay, first one, why are manhole covers round? This is going to be something you just have to think about. If you don't know the answer to it, they're looking to see why, and your answer is gonna be something like, hey, a round cover won't fit through the hole. We are generally round in shape as human beings. We can, workmen can slide it off and roll it, maneuver it easier, or whatever. It's just things like that. They wanna get you, want, they, they wanna see that you're thinking logically. They wanna see that you're thinking sensibly and you have reasonable skills to justify why something is something. Even if maybe one or two of them aren't quite right. Maybe they're not designed for a human being whole. Maybe that's not quite the thing, but it comes, it's reasonably feasible and it seems that you have thought about the problem carefully when they're being presented to you. And that comes up with a tip, guys. When you get the problem, when you get the question, just take some time. You just take some time. Don't get pressured into spitting out the first thing that comes into your mind. Take a deep breath, relax, take a sip of water, think about it, take another sip of water. That's buying you time and you can come up with something. All right, how many golf balls fit inside a school bus? What the answer is, I don't know what the answer is. I'm sure if you Google it, you can come up with the answer. That's not the point. Again, they wanna see how you think about the problem. So you might think about the problem like this. You might say, hey, you know what? Actually, um, I know that when I go to the driving range and I get a bucket of balls, 100 balls, it's in a container about this size. It's about uh, you know one foot by two foot or whatever units you're using. So I think that's 100. I reckon I can have, hold, you know, 10 buckets in my body size, a school bus holds 50 people, plus I think you could probably squeeze another 30 on top, that kind of lateral thinking. So I'm gonna multiply this by this by this, I think it's this many golf balls. It may be way out of order of magnitude, but the point is, it's how you're approaching the problem that they're interested in. That's what will give you the tick in the box, not the right answer. Let's look at something else you might get. Number three, your Minister of Transport for the UK you need to change the traffic from left to right. How do you go about it? Again, this is open-ended. There's no real right or wrong way, right? If it, does, if it ever does happen, which I doubt it will be, if it does, there's going to be some kind of suggestions as to which way to do it. There won't be a right or wrong way. But they're expecting you to say things like, hey, we want to put out radio ads and TV ads telling you when the date is and how to prepare. We want to send out leaflets. We want to send out this. We want to do this. We want to, do, you know, whatever it may be. I want to do, I want to get someone to do a safety assessment. I need to get the signposts manufactured. I need to get this done. I need to get that done. Just the logical thinking, again, how you solve the problem is what they're looking for. Number four, how many windows are there in this building? Pretty common one, this. And this, again, you don't need to get it right. You probably need to get it reasonably accurate, but it's a case of saying you're sitting in this office and you go, you know what, uh, this office is fairly big. I think I saw three offices like this on this floor and there's three the other side of the building and there's a toilet at the far end. So I'm gonna say I can see three windows here. So I'm gonna go nine on one side, nine on the other, one by the toilet, one by the stairwell. And I think we had 20 floors in the building if I recall the lift correctly. So that is that times that times that times that times that. That's what they're looking for. That may well be wrong. You may be able to be not the right amount of floors or the right amount of windows, but it's just showing how you solve the problem instead of just going one, two, trying to count them, which obviously is not gonna work. 
Next one, number five, how many toothbrushes are there in London? Uh, similar kind of thing, you're gonna say, hey, the population in London, is that even if you don't know the population of London, right? Assume you don't know. You can say, I'm assuming the population of London is this number. How many toothbrushes are there? I'm going to assume that people own at least one and a half toothbrushes because people own one, maybe they've got another one somewhere else or in a travel bag or whatever. So that's my number. It's that extra layer. You know, the extra thought behind it is what they are looking for. And by the way, if you want to look it up, go and look it up. There'll probably be a finite answer on Google. That's not the point. And by the way, if you're in the interview and they ask you a question, you do know the answer to it, don't just blurt out, you know, 800,000, 225, 652, whatever, whatever number, obviously that's not the right number, but you get the point. If you're blurting that out, you're giving away and they're gonna ask you another question and expect you to go through the same thing. Why don't you go through the question, say, oh, I think uh, uh, population of London is this, toothbrushes are that, but I'm taking away the people that are flying in because we have amount of tourists in here. A lot of people work in London, but don't live in London. So I'm gonna say this, and then you can come up with the answer and it looks a bit more credible and it's coming out with the answer straight away because you've Googled it. Or number six, how many basketballs fit inside a 747? Similar thing to the golf balls, but you can add an extra layer into this and say, depends if they're inflated or deflated. That lateral thinking is what is gonna give you a tick in the box as opposed to coming up with the right answer. Okay guys, let me know. There's six of questions that often appear in trader interviews for prop firms and in, uh, investment banks. If you've been to one, let me know what you had in the comments section below. Always interested to see that. And if you are going for a job interview, best of luck. Bye-bye.